for Him. We won't remain in darkness, but we'll have the light of life. And that's what we're here to do is celebrate the light of life. This song is called God of Brilliant Lights. Amen. This is God of Lights. Chapter 4. 
Verse 1, it says, Now I say, as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and, and managers until the day set by the Father. Everybody say, the day set by the Father. The day set by the Father. the Father, he is in control. Yes. Amen? Amen. When he says, Son, come back, there will be a day when he comes back. Just like the first time the Father sent the Son. Amen? The fullness of time. And he came. And he's coming back. We're looking forward to that. But it says in verse 3, So also we, while we were children, we were held in bondage under the elemental things of the world. Verse 4, But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that He might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Ooh, yes. So God the Father had one thing in mind. He wanted you and I, He wanted the world to know Him as Abba. He wanted... He wanted the world to know God as, as Father. And in order to do that, he says what? Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son. Everybody say, the Spirit of His Son. Spirit of his son. Into our hearts. Into our hearts. Crying, Abba, Father. Amen. So God wanted to reveal Himself to you and I as, as, as Father. And He sent His Spirit to dwell in the hearts of believers. In, in, inside of us so that you and I, we might be able to now see God, not just a, as a mean God, he's a bad God, why is God this way? God, you know, everybody's questioning God nowadays in a crazy world. And I'm here to tell you, the problems in this world didn't come from God, they came from the enemy. His name is, is the devil, his name is Satan, and he's the deceiver. And that's why this world is in such turmoil. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. That life, we experience that life as you and I come into fellowship with God by the understanding that God is my Father. And not only is He my Father, He is a good, good Father. Everybody say He's a good, good Father. He's a good, good Father this morning. And His Father is a good, good Father. He loves His children and He has good, good things for those love Him and trust in Him and believe in Him. Amen. And that's what we're here to do during this time of worship. Just, I want you to call upon the name of, of God and just know Him as a Father this morning. Just let Him come and do a work. Lord, we're just going to let you do a work. We understand you right now. As a good, good Father. We just thank you for the Spirit that you sit in our hearts. Now we can cry out even this morning and know He was good, good, good Father.
long ways, God.
to you, O Lord. Coming to you, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love you, Daddy. You're good.
God. We just here together to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. We're here to stimulate one another to love God with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. So together, saints, we just say, God, I love you more than anything else. There's nothing more important. There's nothing more important than loving you. Jesus, the love you with all of our hearts, soul, strength, and mind. Because there's none like you. We rejoice in you. We bless you. We give you thanks this morning for this time together. For the work that you're doing in all of our lives. In your church, Lord, we thank you that you're building your church. The gates of hell will not prevail. The Lord, you're forging the love in our hearts. Our love for you, Lord. But the world and the enemy. They gotta stay out. They gotta stay out this morning because there's a real love in my heart this morning. Amen, saints. The enemy's got it. There's only one doctrine that I tell you. I've been communicating. One doctrine that'll keep the enemy and darkness out. That's love of the Lord your God with all your heart. Yes. So, strength in mind. Your intimacy with the Lord is the only thing that will keep the enemy out. Jesus warned us in the end time, people are going to get buggered up. Everybody said there's no reason to get buggered up. I mean, I don't, I don't say that, you know, just I know it's funny, but you know what? There's some real people that are in outright deception and darkness. Because they paid attention to religion, they paid attention to government, they paid attention to the world, they paid attention to psychology, they paid attention to everybody except for the one that is able to really enlighten them, and his name is Jesus Christ. And his name is the Spirit of the Living God. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can set you and, you and I apart from what is true and what is false. That's right. What is right? And what if there is not a doctrine and a theology that can do that. It's a person. His name is the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that can really help you and I discern so that we can really walk in the light as he is in, himself is in the light. And the more we go on, there's going to be some people that think they're in the light. I'm going to talk about it this morning. They think they're in the light, but they're really not walking in the light. They've got a doctrine. They've got a religion. They've got theology, but they have not the light of Christ. And so you and I here this morning, I'm not talking, we're not just an elitist group here, amen? There's a lot of people seeking the truth. But listen, we have got to be diligent to make sure that we are seeking truth and walking in the light this morning. And that's what we're here to do as a church family, amen? We're here to humble ourselves before our God. And he says, he will lift up those are bowed down. Amen. God lifts up those who are bowed down. So we as a congregation, as a people, we're here to just say, God, we need you. We're desperate for you. We don't want to be led astray. We want to walk a straight and narrow path. That in the end, you will, when you come back, then and only then, I will hear it from you yourself, oh God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what we're here to do. We mean business. Amen. I love you guys. Thanks for your hearts. Let's turn around and greet each other. Oh, we're going to take up an offering. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, Seth Corinthians says something about a cheerful giver. You know, thank you, Teresa. She is so cheerful. And it, and it, and it, and Let's not turn around. We're going to sing one more song as we worship the Lord. How many knows we walk in the light we come alive? Oh, yeah. That's what we're doing. Let's take up our offering. Let's take up our offering first night that we will just this. I'm sorry, I messed up. Let's, let's stay in an attitude of worship here. The only one we get in, you know, fellowship is worship, and it really is. When you turn around and you just smile and hug a brother and sister, that's an act of worship. And then we, we take time. Our name is Kodanea for a reason. We want to 
express fellowship. That's an aspect of our, of our worship. Amen. But we also want to worship God um, in our giving. That's all a part of it. So Steve, come on up here, Steve Garcia. Give a hand to my brother, Steve Garcia. As we give and we worship the Lord in our giving. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it says all scripture is given for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and instruction. In Matthew 6, 24, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. But Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7. He says, This I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Oh, now. We're so in an amazing ministry here. Excuse me. And the fruit that this ministry has, as we sow into it, we actually get to reap the rewards of that as well. Our brother uh, Brad, our pastor, our shepherd, he's out there sharing the gospel, bearing fruit, and this ministry is very fruit. Amen. Amen. And the love that we give each other. Yes. Cheryl. Sure. Yes. Elizabeth and Benny. Bob and Sharon. I mean, just the, the heart of this ministry is love. Yes. And the neat thing is, as we give in this ministry, we get to get rewards for that as well. So I'd just like to encourage everybody to give. Amen. 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 Steve's going to bring the bucket around. Just worship the Lord. Have a good time. Just say, God, I worship you. I don't worship money. I worship you. And as we do that, I believe we're going to come alive and we're going to cause the city as much as possible to come alive this morning. This song is called Come Alive.
We're coming alive as you breathe upon us. Lord, I thank you, Lord. You said if we'll give, it will be given unto us, Lord, in every area, whether it be, as Steve said, whether it be financially, as we sow financially, we thank you that you'll provide. As we sow our gifts, Lord, as we give our spirits of life that you've given us to the world, we thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful to supply us, to continually supply us with seed, Lord, the seed to be sown. And as we sow, Lord, we are thankful and grateful and declare that certainly we're going to see a harvest as we're, as we're faithful to sow. So this morning, I pray your blessing upon your people that are faithful to sow in every area of the Lord. Bless us. Lord, as we choose to be a blessing to the world and bless you with all that you've given us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Turn around and greet somebody now. Come on. Turn around and greet somebody.